Hi, I'm Hadas, and today I'm going to show you by having a holistic approach to data, by breaking silos, and by having sophisticated out-of-the-box detection, auto-investigation, scoring, and machine learning correlation capabilities, you can replace your SIM with Hunter's OpenXDR. So in order to do so, we will start with the XDR dashboard, which represents the XDR pipeline that starts from raw data all the way to correlated stories that represent potential attack flows. So it all starts with the raw data. We are ingesting any types of data sources at any scale necessary, either with an API or from an S3 bucket. We ingest that data into Snowflake Data Warehouse, um, normalizing and structuring the data for an easy to query investigation and also to allow the machine to interpret any type of data. We're breaking the silos by allowing ingestion of any type of security telemetry, anything from identity to SaaS applications, cloud, EDR and other on-premises tools, etc. The ingest ingestion to Hunters is really easy. We just click here, add data flows, choose the product that we want to focus on. Of course, the source itself, let's choose another one. So we choose the product itself, um, choose the source, choose the dates in case that we want to ingest also retro um, actively. And that's it. That data is now in Hunters. Now, as you can see, Hunters supports both organizational sources as well as global sources. Global sources can be anything like threat intelligence feeds, IOC feeds, etc., and those are mostly used for correlation capabilities that we will see um, down the road when we continue with the demo. When we say that we have data connectors, the important thing to note here is that Hunters does not only support any type of telemetry and logs for ingestion and collection capabilities, but also for detection. So for example, if we are saying that we support AWS CloudTrail, that of course means that you can ingest that type of data and that Hunters supports that from a schema perspective, but it also means that we have detection capabilities that basically take a cyber thesis that was examined by our security researchers and that there is a detection and a rule capability out of the box that basically looks for a suspicious activity across that specific telemetry in real time using Hunter's XDR. And that's exactly the detection phase that we basically see here. Taking raw data, taking hundreds of terabytes and basically investigating those with the detection capabilities means that now there are signals that represent potential suspicious activity um, as per Hunter's out-of-the-box detection capabilities. Those detections are mapped with the MITRE ATT&CK framework. We divide that to basically enterprise, cloud, and SaaS applications. Now let's take a look um, into AWS, for example. We see here all the tactics and techniques that are supported by Hunters. And if I click here, I see the exact telemetry that is needed to basically make sure that I am protected from that particular techniques perspective. Now, as mentioned, we of course support TTPs from the MITRE ATT&CK framework, but we also have Hunter's um, unique theses that have been examined by our security researchers that are represented by this H here. Not only that the user has the out-of-the-box detection capabilities that were written by Hunter's, but the user can also write their own analytics and detectors by clicking this um, new analytics here choosing the data source that they want to focus on, choosing the logic, the attributes, etc., examining that, making sure that everything makes sense, deciding what is the score based on their confidence and maliciousness that they think that is fit for that particular detection, making sure that it is also aligned with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, and applying that to see that detection across their telemetry using Hunter's XDR. So after the analytics and the detection phase took place, we took those 29 uh, terabytes of data and ended up with 2,300 leads that represent suspicious activities across one's environment. Now, we want to take those leads and ask a different bunch of questions to basically narrow that data set that an analyst needs to investigate even more. Now, 
if we see here, because of that process that we will speak about uh, right away, we have been able to reduce 90% of the leads, ending up with 208 hot leads. What happens in the auto investigation process is that the machine takes all of the leads and all of the features and attributes that are related to that and ask a whole different bunch of questions that a forensics analyst that would have all the time and all of the resources in the world would have asked as well. For example, if we have identified a suspicious hash that was detected across one's EDR, for example, we want to ask how prevalent that hash is on my environment. Who opened that? If it was detected on an IOC feed, and if so, whether it is associated with a specific malware. I also want to ask who is the person that ran that particular hash on their um, device and what were the processes that before and after that. All of those questions are being asked automatically in the auto investigation process and the outcomes of those questions eventually help us to dynamically score the different leads, allowing the analyst not only to start with a much more shrinked and focused data set to begin with, but also a prioritized one for a much more efficient and effective investigation process. The leads could be accessed through two main ways. The first one is the lead page, and that's mostly for threat hunting use cases. As you can see, the analyst can go ahead and investigate a specific attack surface, such as AWS, for example, and they can go ahead and access the leads or the suspicious events um, from a particular thesis that they want to examine, such as this one, that eventually represents a detector um, that was written again, again by hunters. The other way that we can access the leads and alerts is from the security operations page. The security operations page is geared towards tier one and tier two analysts that eventually need to access the leads for triage purposes and use cases. As can be seen, the alerts are displayed in a descending order based on the severity level. So the most severe alerts are going to be displayed first and the less severe ones are going to be down the screen. The analyst is not only able to see the source and the score that is related to a particular event, but also the description, letting them know what exactly happened and also the outcome of the automatic investigation process that we have mentioned before. So let's take an example. We see here that this is a CrowdStrike Falcon native detection that allows the analyst to understand what are the attributes that are related to that, what are the entities that are involved here and linked to this particular event, the score and why it was scored this way, different information that is related to the processes, enrichments, etc., that eventually would allow the analyst to go ahead and assign that if needed to one of their coworkers to decide what is the status should be of this particular event, to add their comments, etc. Alerts can be populated in the security operations page in three main ways. The first one is by the existing vendors, security vendors that are out there, either Carbon Black, AWS, etc. The second one is by the custom analytics that the user can easily write by their own, as we saw before. And the third one is by hunters out of the box detections that are eventually the bread and butter of this machine. Now let's go back to the XDR dashboard. After we saw how we're taking hundreds of raw data and terabytes of information and make out of those a little bit more than 2,000 leads in this particular example and then shrinking that even more to hot leads that were scored based on the outputs of the auto investigation process, we want to see how we can take all of that information and basically leverage machine learning capabilities to correlate between singular events and make out, of the, make out of those stories that represent a potential attack flow. This is really where the magic happens. What happens is basically we take all of the leads, all of the entities and attributes that are related to those, and we fetch all of that and throw them on a massive graph database. The graph database, again, with machine learning capabilities, finds the relationship between all of those attributes and leads and events that were detected in the detection and the auto investigation process and finds correlation, correlations out of those 
basically telling a story that an analyst would be able to understand and again to make a much more effective usage of their time which eventually helps a lot of analysts that are working with Hunter's OpenXDR to reduce delve time and also to make a much more efficient response um, with the outcomes of the stories that are detected here. Let's take an example of a pretty interesting story that the Hunter's machine has detected. This story represents a potential credential theft by Mimikatz on a machine. So it starts with a Zscaler alert that basically um, identified an access to a pen testing website. And the alert says that there is a page risk potential threat on a particular machine. We see here that there is an access to a malicious URL on GitHub. Now, if we open, to, uh, we, if we open the leads, we can see that there were several attempts by the attacker to download a malicious Mimikatz file from GitHub. Most of the attempts were blocked, but there was one time that the attacker was able to bypass the security gateway and basically to download the malicious Mimikatz file. Uh, two days later, we see that the EDR was detecting threats on a machine named Client CB. Now, if we open the leads here, we can filter for the specific ones that we want to see. And we actually see here in the thread description that the machine really identified the uh, attempts to invoke Mimikatz. And not only that it identified that, but also it was able to block it, um, as it could be seen here, um, not allowing the attacker to access the malicious command line. We also extract um, the raw information from the EDR, such as bits, jobs, usage, which by itself is not necessarily that interesting. But because we are extracting all of the raw information from the EDR, we were able to understand that the external URL that was browsed to access the malicious command line on GitHub was actually the same one that did a, an illegitimate usage of the bits jobs which eventually allowed the Hunter's XDR machine to understand that the access to the pen test website, which we saw at the beginning, was actually a malicious activity attempting to invoke Mimikatz and steal credentials on this machine and basically stealing the credentials of the user that is associated with this EDR agent. Now, after we've seen um, all of the detection capabilities and the auto-investigation capabilities, and also, of course, the stories that leverage the machine learning um, capabilities of hunters, allowing to correlate between events, I want to show also how we can leverage the entity search capability of hunters that allows not only to consume those leads and stories and events, but also to be able to search proactively across the telemetry and across everything that Hunters was able to detect. Now, this entity search allows one to not only search for a specific detection, for example, but rather for anything that comes to mind. It can be a malware, for example. It can be a process that I want to investigate. It can be a person that I want to specifically look into their activity and basically to search for anything that would shed more light on what is going on on one's environment and telemetry. So let's take as an example the Drydex Trojan. So even if I don't know what are the particular IOCs that are associated with that, I can only write down Drydex, as can be seen here. And I see that there are IOC tags that are related to Drydex, which gives me basically an understanding that something that is related to Drydex was detected across my environment. So I can see here the IOC itself, in this case, an IP that is related to Drydex Trojan. I can see the leads that basically detected or that were relevant to this particular, um, to this particular um, malware. And I can see the outcomes of the auto-investigation process that eventually detected Drydex IOCs on different processes or um, events that happened across my telemetry. Now, I can also not only look for a specific malware, but maybe for an email address. So let's take the email address that was relevant to the story that we saw before. It was this one. So if I click on that, I can see all of the different um, events that are inv involving this particular email address across Hunter's XDR. 
So here I see the story that we detected before, and we see all different types of other events that this was detected in. We see here another story that might seem interesting, another access to a pen test website. Maybe there is a larger story in this, and an analyst might want to take a closer look into that, um, which probably could tell us a little bit more about this particular user, which, as we remember from before that, was probably compromised um, with Mimikatz uh, invoke on their machine. So to wrap it up, Hunters allows modern security operation centers to replace their SIM with OpenXDR. By leveraging data usability, basically allowing ingestion of any kind of data sources and breaking data silos, by gaining incident clarity, by having out-of-the-box detection, auto investigation, scoring, and machine learning correlation capabilities, and by leveraging the business impact, freeing up time of manual work from the analysts and helping them to focus on what matters. All of that allows organizations all across the world to replace their legacy SIM with Hunter's OpenXDR.